like Fall Guys? Because I'm pretty good at Fall Guys. And I'm pretty good at Fall Guys because I, as a child, used to watch The Krypton Factor growing up. Oh yes, The Krypton Factor. You can shove your wipe out, or your It's a Knockout, or your Takeshi's Castle up your ass. Those are for the little kids. I watched The Krypton Factor, which was serious physical challenges and serious mind games, all right? Krypton Factor was for big boys only. And I am the biggest, roundest, juiciest boy of all, which is why I am the absolute best player at Fall Guys in the world, and you can all S my D. And I'm sorry for using language like that, folks. I really am. I don't want you to S my D. I think you just should as a mark of, oh, well, I'm not that great. Sometimes I fall off the thing. But Fall Guys is a pretty decent, fun little game. You know, they've taken that idea of the Battle Royale. Let's have loads and loads of players and whittle them down to one. And they've applied it to uh, one of those aforementioned wacky uh, physical game shows. You know, it's a knockout or Takeshi's Castle or what have you. Um, many of the challenges in the game take the form of races uh, where you and dozens and dozens of other little eggy beanie characters uh, go from the beginning to the end across these obstacle courses, uh, each with their own unique special little gimmick. Um, there are other challenges as well. There's like a tile-based memory game, uh, Human Tetris. Uh, I don't know if you've seen that from wacky game shows uh, where walls come up and you've got to get in the gaps of the moving walls, otherwise you'll be pushed away and you'll lose. Uh, there's all sorts. There's like tag, where you've got to get a foxtail and run around and, and keep it, otherwise, you know, another player might come and grab you and take it. Um, it's very brightly coloured, it's got the conceit of a game show. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing them actually bump that up a bit. I don't think the game would benefit from, you know, commentary and too much talking, but more audience responses and, and tie that more into the aesthetic and, and the, the sound especially. Uh, I'd, I'd love to hear more audience reactions to things and really promote a little bit more of a Monday Night Combat vibe, really promote the idea uh, that this is a game show. Um, <clears throat> But on the whole, uh, I must say, I, I really, really enjoy this game. Uh, it's just that right amount of carefully controlled chaos. Uh, it's a mess, but that's by design, and it's not because of the level design or the, or the, the way the world works. Uh, it's supposed to be a scrum. You and dozens of these weird little creatures that look like a cross between Bomberman and a Boobar will constantly bump into each other, get in each other's way. You don't just walk through each other. There's collision detection here, and that's a big part of the challenge. It's you and an army of weird little capsule people trying to navigate a world specifically designed to fuck with an army of weird little capsule people. A good level that shows off um, what this game is like is the seesaw course. There's a race course that is almost entirely built out of gigantic seesaw platforms. So not only do you have to run across all of these seesaws trying to keep your balance while jumping from platform to platform, you've also got to count on the fact that there are loads of other players tipping those seesaws in all manner of directions. So it's not just about predicting how best to land on a seesaw and jump to another one, it's also about predicting where everyone else is going, what direction they will send the seesaw, and trying to adjust your own movement movements and jumps are based on where you think things will be. It's weird because despite how anarchic and messy the gameplay is, despite the fact you couldn't by any stretch of the imagination call this a tactical game, there's nonetheless still a massive amount of on-the-fly reading into the behaviour of the other players around you. Another example is a course that's regularly gated off by a series of doors. Now some of those doors you can jump through, like smash right through them, some of the doors are fake and you'll just, you know, hit smack face into a wall. So the question becomes, do you hang back, let other people make the mistakes, and then capitalize on their trial and error by going through the doors that they've discovered for you? Bearing in mind, of course, that plenty of other people will have had that same idea and will therefore be trying to squeeze in their droves through a very small space. Little alliances of convenience can form over the course of seconds, because that's all it takes. I mean, each course is a couple minutes at the very most. But during that time, you might realize that, well, in order to push this little turnstile, all of us have to be pushing in the same direction. And if other people are pushing the turnstile from the other way, even though we're in competition, none of us will get through. It's like that thought exercise about two dogs pulling on a bone, you know. 
if they're both pulling on that bone forever, neither one of them's gonna get it. Someone eventually has to yield in order for the bone to be, you know, whatever it is dogs do with bones, eat them or sell them to medical students, I don't know. The races are my favorite aspect, uh, just these really chaotic obstacle courses, but there's some other fun stuff as well. I'm not so fond of the memory game. The ones where you have to think, not so fond of those. I like the tag games. I like a number of the team-based exercises. Sometimes the player base is split into a number of teams and have to work together for that particular round. Such examples are Horde, where there are a, a bunch of giant bulls and the course is separated into three distinct coloured areas and you've got to get as many bulls into your coloured area as possible while of course making sure that the other teams don't poach your bulls. Speaking of poaching, <laughs> there's a similar game in which there's a big pile of eggs and some of those eggs are gold, yum yum yum, and you've got to grab as many eggs as possible and throw them into your little hole. Well again, making sure that enemy teams don't come into your hole and start pulling eggs out of your egg hole, which isn't good. There's a significant uh, variety of games, I feel. Like, I, I, you know, as I'm playing, I'm still finding new games that have turned up. And considering this is one of those live service type games, so it's still in progress, more's gonna be added. This is a real robust foundation upon which to build what I think's gonna be a pretty damn successful online game. It's bright and colorful. I love the, uh, the character designs. I love the course designs. I love the clashing colors. I like how Jimquisition-y some of the logos and stuff looks, all those, uh, those bright blues and turquoises and the pinks and the purples. You know me, you know what I like in terms of colors. It's a shame about the microtransactions. Of course. I mean, it's not a free-to-play game. It could be and should be. And if you've got PlayStation Plus, you can get it through that, which really shows the Devolver Digital and the developers and, and Mediatonic, like, they know where they're making their money and it ain't off upfront sales. And it's a shame because, you know, I, I am a mindless, desperate, drooling consumer dog like the rest of us. I'm more than happy to find excuses to spend money because I cannot understate the size of the void inside me that can only be filled with petty consumerism. I'm happy to throw money at games, but you know, I just can't do that with fee-to-pay games. You can accrue the in-game currency relatively quickly, especially if you're, you know, a Krypton Factor whiz like me. But even then, does the manipulative Fortnite-style store really need to separate costume pieces into upper and lower halves so that for every costume, you've got to make two purchases? Aside from that, which, you know, it's not so much infuriating as it is disappointing. Aside from that, connection issues, that's another big problem that Full Guys is currently facing. Some of that can be put down to, you know, launch period teething trouble. Hopefully that gets fixed in due course, but right now it's, it's a fairly regular annoyance, which is a shame because jumping in and out of the game is really quite quick. It's one of the reasons why um, losing in the game uh, doesn't like, you know, make you feel dejected because you can easily just like jump right back in and start playing again. And playing it again and again is what I've been doing since it came out when there aren't connection errors, of course. It's really varied, but at the same time, it's incredibly simple. Mostly all you do is run, jump, and occasionally grab things or other players. It's visually communicative enough that it often takes a few seconds uh, running a course for the first time uh, without even looking at uh, instructive text to work out where to go and what to do. There shouldn't be anything more than a second's pause, if that, to work out what to do in a new challenge. Everything really is just simple and straightforward. And the beauty of it is the complication of the game comes from the presence of many other people. And really, dear viewer, is that not the point? Is it not the way that no matter what challenges lie ahead in life, so often the biggest hurdle is other people? That we may all indeed teeter on the seesaw of life. And no matter how hard we struggle to maintain our own balance, someone, somewhere, could always throw us off kilter. Indeed, so often in Fall Guys, one must reflect on the human condition, dare I say so. As I push a turnstile one way, and everyone pushes a turnstile the other way, I want to scream out, can't we all just push in the same direction? Can we not lift each other up instead of, as some players like to do, stand at the finish line, not cross it, but spend their time grabbing other players on the butt when they run past to stop them crossing the finish line just for a few seconds and you you don't get prizes for time you could get an extra commendation for being in the top 20 or 50 percent but these players have actively given that up just to stop other people it's crab in a bucket fall guys is the crabs in a bucket of games and i like it quite a bit i like it i, I like it a lot actually really really dig it 
Uh, I, 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 you know, if, if you've got PlayStation Plus, certainly give it a go. I think if you're in a position where you're paying, like, I think it's like $19.99 for it, I'd say maybe hold off on that. But if you've got it, certainly play it. It's the kind of game that makes me laugh regularly, not at specific things that are happening in the moment, but every now and then the sheer absurdity of the concept hits me again. And I'm watching these little marshmallow freaks running into each other, turning into a massive pile like the zombies in the World War Z film, but they're all going, ooh! Ooh, ooh, ooh. And every now and then you've just got to stop and have a little bit of a titter. And that's my video on Fall Guys. Krypton Factor, mate. Fucking Krypton Factor. Get in there. Thought that we'd be last to go, it is so strange.